Hi, good afternoon. In today's lecture, I'm going to go ahead and begin with the concept of random variable. Now, you know, we have gone ahead and understood what is probability and how do we go ahead and how do we measure probability under various scenarios. We have also gone ahead and talked about conditional probability in, in you know, some space. Now, after we understand probability, the next aim that we have is to go ahead and understand how do we measure probability of a random variable. But to understand how do we measure probability of a random variable, we must first go ahead and understand what is a random variable. Now, you know, this lecture is going to be designed in two parts. I not only want to kind of understand what is a random variable, but I also want to go ahead and distinguish between a random variable, which is discrete and a random variable, which is continuous. And I also want to kind of go ahead and understand the difference between the two. Mostly in the first half of my lectures, maybe another two or three lectures, my focus would be continuously on the uh, discrete random variables. And only in the later half, after I have completed different distributions related to discrete random variable, I would jump on to a continuous random variable and that is when I will go ahead and do distributions related to continuous random variable. So let's go ahead and let us begin with the concept of random variable. Let us try and understand what is a random variable to begin with. So you know to begin with understand that there is a sample space S and then if there is a sample space S, I define a random variable as any rule that associates a number with each outcome of the sample space. So for example, my sample space can be tossing a coin and I can say it is either head or tail. And then my random variable can be one if head, and my random variable can take the place zero if tail. So if I go ahead and I assign some number to the random variable, that is when I am saying that it has become a random variable. Consider another example. Suppose I toss a coin, but this time I'm tossing it twice. And now I'm interested in understanding what is my sample space. And I'm saying my sample space can be both of them being head, both of them being uh, tail, both of them, one being head, one being tail, one being tail, one being head. And now my random variable X measures the number of heads. When two coins are tossed. So I will have the value of X as zero because I have this situation where the number of heads are zero. I will have the value of X as one because I have situations where the number of heads are one and I will have X as two because I can have two heads also. So, you know, I can say that X can be zero, one or two where these represents the number of heads that I got when I tossed a coin. So ideally, to my sample space that I have in hand, I'm trying to fit some numbers on those sample space. And when I do that, when I associate any rule, so my rule here was the number of heads. My rule, another random variable could have been the number of tails when two coins are toys, tossed. So my random variable really can be any rule. 
it's not that you know it's it's fixed to just one rule so any rule that you're making that associates a number it's giving a number with each outcome in the sample space then that is called a random variable in mathematical language random variable is any function whose domain is sample space why because it is picking up values from the sample space so domain is sample space and range is the set of the real numbers so range is the outcome and outcome is in terms of 0 1 or 2 so this becomes my range and sample space becomes my domain this is just a mathematical way of saying the same thing that i make a rule such that i go back to my sample space I look at my sample space and depending on that sample space, I give some numbers based on the rule and that X that I form is called a random variable. Take a question. When students call university help desk for technical support, he or she will either immediately be able to speak to someone, which is a success, or be placed on hold, which is a failure. So I am saying that you know, my sample space is success or failure. And then I'm assigning X some values. X gets the value one if success and zero if failure. So because I have been able to assign numbers to my sample space, this X is now a random variable. Let's go ahead and consider another example. So consider an experiment in which a telephone number in a certain area code is dialed. And now consider this random variable. So you just, you know, you shuffle out the numbers, you dial a number, that number can be a valid number, that number cannot be a valid number. So, you know, for example, you know, you may get 9, 8, 7, 6, 4, 5, 4, 2, something like this. When you dial this up, maybe somebody says that this is an invalid number. Or when you dial this up, maybe somebody picks up. So I define my random variable Y, which is one if the selected number is unlisted and zero if the selected number is listed in a directory, which means it is valid. Again, because I have been able to link my sample space to different numbers, I have been able to form a random variable. Okay. Now, Based on this, I want to go ahead and discuss the first kind of random variable and hence the first kind of distribution, which is known as a Bernoulli random variable. What is a Bernoulli random variable? Any random variable which can just take the value 0 or 1, which means only two values possible things like head or tail success or failure listed or unlisted when it can take only two values then that random variable is called as a Bernoulli random variable let's take an example suppose an experiment in which nine volt batteries are tested unless one has acceptable voltage so you pick up a battery, it can have an acceptable voltage or not. If you, if you have a battery which has an acceptable voltage, you stop. Otherwise, you continue. So, you know, if in the first go, you get the battery which has acceptable voltage, it's a success for you. Otherwise, it's not a success for you. Maybe the first battery you picked up, it did not have acceptable voltage, but the second battery had. Or maybe the first two didn't have acceptable voltage, but the third had, and so on. So this becomes your sample space. And now your X can be number of batteries tested before experiment terminates. So you, you can test one battery, two battery, three battery, and so on. So this X is again a possible value of integers. Now, Supposedly here, I don't give you nine batteries. And I just tell you that you, you have a lot of batteries, infinite batteries, and you keep testing them and you stop only when you get a battery which is acceptable. 
So then your sample space is also infinite because it may be the case that the first 100 batteries failed and then there was one which was acceptable. So you can get many values of X. You know, one would mean that the first battery itself was acceptable. Two would mean that the first was not acceptable, but the second was acceptable. Three mean would mean that the third was acceptable. So if you get something like this, you will have so many possible values of integers. So this is not Bernoulli. But this that we saw, saw earlier, this one, this is a Bernoulli random variable. Now, there are two types of random variable. One is called discrete. Discrete is whenever it is a finite or countable infinite, which means whenever I'm able to give numbers, you know, I'm able to say that this is one, two, three, and so on. Continuous random variable is where I have one and two there, but I also have things in between. So I can have 1.1 also as a value. 1.001 is also a value. 1.95 is also a value. So, you know, between one and two also, any possible integer is a value of the random variable. So in that sense, I have a continuous random variable. A discrete is where you can only take whole numbers, one, two, three, and so on. 